Hi, this is Reed Bailey with the second part on analysis of variance in the Intuitive Statistics series. Here we're focusing on actually what ANOVA is and how it works. In all of these videos in Intuitive Statistics, we're focusing on what statistical tests to use when, not as much on the basic math behind the stats. Uh, although in this video, actually, we're going to learn a little bit of the basic math because it's really important in order to know how to interpret the results of analysis of variance. Up to this point, we've talked about one sample t-test, independent sample t-test, paired t-test, and analysis of variance. And now we're going to go into some of the details about how analysis of variance works and how to interpret the results. We're going to use our same example, opera fundraising, and where there's an opera company that's trying to raise money. And they're trying three different ways to do that, through email, through phone, or through sending a letter. They're going to send... Um, eight letters to, to possible donors, they're going to send eight emails to possible donors, they're going to call eight other donors, and they're going to see which of these approaches leads to the most amount of money in terms of fundraising. Here's a plot of what the data could look like. We see three different approaches, each having a different mean and a different amount of spread to it. Now the question is, how does analysis of variance actually go about figuring out if these three means are different from another. Well, with analysis of variance, like with t-tests, some of the important calculations deal with calculating the amount of spread the data has. And I'm using the word spread in a very general sense, not in a mathematical uh, formula sense. Uh, we see the data we might have here, three different approaches for collecting money, each with eight different observations. Um, and each of these approaches has a mean value for the amount of money that was collected. One of the measures used for spread and analysis of variance is called the sum of squares within each approach, or the spread within each approach. How this is calculated is simply taking each data point, so in this case, the 1,000, subtracting it from the mean value, and then squaring it. And then doing the same for the 1,500, the next data point. And then doing the same for the next data point, the 1,200, and so on and so forth, on down each of the data points. And if you were to subtract the each data point from the mean value and square it and add it all up, the value you would get would be 6.1 times 10 to the fifth. Now we go ahead and we do this for the second approach, but now the mean value is 1737.5. And the final approach, where the mean value is 1181.3. And we can see that of these approaches, the most spread out approach is approach one, with the largest number of sum of squares, and the least spread out is approach three, with the smallest sum of squares. Now, one of the things that we'll do within analysis of variance is take all three of these and add them up. So the total spread within each approach is just adding all these up, and that turns out to be 1.5 times 10 to the 6. Now, there's some other measures of spread that you need to calculate in analysis of variance, too. And fortunately, each one is about as easy to calculate as the spread within each approach calculated with sum of squares. The other one that we'll talk about now is the overall sum of squares. This is where you get an overall mean value. In this case, of all 24 points, the overall mean is 1408.3. And then you follow the same type of calculations. Take every one of the 24 data points, individually subtract it from the overall mean, and then square it. So 1,000 minus the overall mean squared, 1,500 minus the overall mean squared, 1,200 minus the overall mean squared, all the way down, all the way, the way until you get to 1,100 minus 1408.3 squared. Add all that up, and that's called the total spread, here's what I'm calling it, or the total sum of squares, uh, uh, which is in this case 2.9 times 10 to the sixth. So we have these two values of spread, the sum of squares within and the sum of squares total. What do we do with all that with analysis of variance? 
Well, instead of comparing means for each sample, like in a t-test, remember our t-test sort of intuitive equations was a mean value on the numerator or a difference in means in the numerator divided by the spread or some measure of spread, which was a pooled version or the standard error or a pooled version of the standard error. Instead of that, with analysis of variance, we're comparing the spread within each level, that sum of squares within to the spread between different levels. So the sum of squares treatment. And when you're talking about spread or sum of squares within a level, it's referred to as error. It doesn't mean there was a mistake made. It just means that, for instance, when you send out a letter to raise money for the opera, you don't get the exact same dollar figure back from a donor for every single donor contacted with a the letter. There's variability within sending a letter. There's variability within the donors who receive an email. There's variability in how much is contributed by all the donors who just receive a telephone call. So that's the spread within, and it's called sum of squares error. And the spread between these three levels of, of email, of receiving a letter, of receiving a phone call, the spread between those three is called sum of squares treatment. Now, in statistics, a lot of times when we want to compare something, we'll just put one of them in the numerator, one in the denominator, get a ratio. You've seen analysis of variance before in another class. This equation right here is how you calculate the F statistic. So I like using the word spread a lot. So, you know, the statisticians, I don't think like the analysis of spread acronym too much. So, hey, why, why not? Analysis of variance. All we're doing with this is comparing spread of your sample within each level to spread between the different levels. And that spread is measured with variance. Hence the name analysis of variance, even though it's used to compare mean values. All right, well, so far we know how to calculate the sum of squares for error. But we haven't figured out how to calculate the sum of squares for the treatment. So let's go in and see how ANOVA does this. I generally say no equations in the intuitive stats series, but this is really clever what statisticians did. And I want to break this down for you so you can see how clever it is too. First, let's look at the different terms in this equation. The Y bars with the two dots after them are the overall average. Remember that 1408 number that we saw earlier? All 24 points average. That's what these Y with two dots after it means are. Individual donation amounts are just the Y with the IJ subscripts. So, you know, one person donated $1,500, one person donated $1,000, one person donated $1,200. It's the 24 individual donation amounts are these Y sub IJs. And the only other term, it's highlighted in blue here, is the average for a single fundraising strategy. So the average for letter the average for email, the average for receiving a phone call. For one of them, uh, the first one on our data table, it was 1306 was approximately what that average value was. So now if we look at our equation, this is a term we know how to calculate. It's each individual value minus the overall average squared and added all up. We did that a minute ago. That was the second number that we calculated. Now, one of these two other ones we did a minute ago, too. See if you can figure out which one it is. Remember, we calculated the spread within each level or the sum of squares within each level? Well, if you said it was this one over here, you're correct. It's each individual data point minus the average for that type of solicitation for the opera fundraising squared and added up. So this, in this case, would be, this would be eight differences between the individual data points and the average for that solicitation type squared and add it all up. And so here's the missing one. This is the sum of squares for the treatment. And you can see mathematically what's really clever they've done is they've taken the total sum of squares and broken it down into the amount between levels and the amount within levels. And in this case, it's the difference between the average for one fundraising strategy and the overall average squared. And 
those are added up, and that's how you get the and multiplied by the by the n, and those are that's how you get the sum of squares for the treatment. Here's a simpler version of the equation: the total sum of squares equals the sum of squares for treatments plus the sum of squares for error. Variation between groups, so between solicitation types, letter, email, telephone, is the sum of squares treatments. Variation within a certain solicitation type is that sum of squares error.